cinema has this insane amount of variety, and it's never had as much variety in it as, as it does right now. So much that it's difficult to keep it all in your head. There's no longer such a thing as, for example, a landscape of cinema, right? This is a very cliched phrase film critics sometimes use, the landscape of cinema. But that's no longer true. There are, you know, hills and valleys and mountains. It's more like a really bustling cityscape. So uh, this, this, this bustling diversity, right, it creates a sort of funny loop. We know that movies are alive and well, right? But the reason we know that movies are alive and well is because we can't really say with any certainty what cinema currently is. I mean, if cinema was dead, there would be a corpse. And we could, you know, make a definitive statement. You know, we could come in and say, oh, that's cinema. I recognize it. And then the coroner pulls the sheet back over the body. But that's not true. Cinema is very much alive, I'm afraid. And it's thriving. And it can be very, very difficult to navigate, whether you are a, a critic or you are just an audience member. Well, I mean, and a critic is also just an audience member. Never forget that, or I should never forget that. You know, a, a lot of uh, these ideas of film culture, you know, the director is important, you know, you should see things in the theater, let's preserve old films. A lot of that stuff we inherited from the Parisian cinephile culture of the 1950s. You know, these idealistic young men who would wear sweaters and baggy pants and smoke a lot and have really controversial opinions about Alfred Hitchcock. Um, but the thing is that that whole system, it created a sort of hierarchy, you know, of the auteur, of mise-en-scene, of decoupage, all those beautiful French words that enshrined a world that doesn't really exist anymore. You know, we, we've been left, I, I, when I say we, I mean critics, have been left with outdated tools, you know, where we, we're using a map that no longer reflect this sort of cityscape of cinema. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? That is not a new question. That's a question that is as old as movies. I mean, as long as we have been making films, we've been trying to figure out where movies as a medium are going to go. And part of the history of filmmaking and of film criticism and the film business has been just trying to figure out the future of cinema. The history of cinema, could, you could almost interpret it as a history of ideas about the future of cinema. And the vast majority of those ideas, of those predictions, turn out to be completely wrong. The reason all of their predictions are going to be wrong is because they assume that cinema, that movies as a medium, will travel in a single direction. We're going to go from this to that. And that's never been the case. The idea that cinema is this one concrete thing, like say, a group of people, like yourselves, watching an image in a darkened theater, like you just did, you know, that, that is an illusion, and it's always been an illusion. If film as a medium, even starting with the actuality film, that Lumiere Brothers film that we watched at the beginning, film as a medium has never traveled in a single direction. It's always been branching out. Right, and these branches develop more branches and then more branches, and then those branches eventually grow together. They grow into each other, the, you know. Um, and then of course there's this, this sort of logical fallacy where people confuse the technology of filmmaking with cinema. I mean, no one is going to tell you that their new pen is going to introduce a revolution in literature. And yet people will, you know, constantly make the same mistake when it, comes with, when it comes to cinema. And that's because cinema is a very young medium. A medium where, which we're still trying to figure out the, the purpose of and the powers of. We can say what cinema does, right? But we can't say what it is for sure. It's like this sort of undiagnosable disease with a million different symptoms. We can say that it turns the world into a metaphor for itself. We can say that it provides us with entertainment while also being great art, you know? We can say that it uh, at once substitutes and feeds off of reality, or we, we can say that it engages with our emotions and our ideas and our feelings and whatnot by feeding off, you know, our gaze. But we can't say those things for sure about every single film. It's very difficult to make a single statement about uh, all of cinema. When we thought of cinema as this concrete, separate thing, an image on a screen in a movie theater, it held a sort of mystical power. It was an outside force. But now cinema is, is everywhere, and mere images won't do. It's, it's necessary to have intent. It's necessary to wield that power, which is all over the place in a particular direction. If I had to say what's wrong with cinema these days, and 
when so much is right, it's very easy to forget that a lot also happens to be wrong. I'd say that, you know, film culture and criticism, filmmaking, it's, it's firm, it's, sorry, it's permeated by a, by a fear of power, a fear of cinema. If we want to do new things, new things on that basic molecular level, not new things on a technological level. What we need is recklessness. Few things, frankly, age better than foolishness or recklessness, and few things age more poorly than high-mindedness. We don't need more people talking about scientific studies that back up their 48 frames per second technique. What we need are people saying and doing nasty things that come from inside of them. We need that element of recklessness. You know, there, there's a fear of, of subjects that are outside the two most superficial ones, which are, by the way, in case you're wondering, two most superficial subjects are mortality and the aging of the author, which, by the way, should not be confused with the condition of old age. I mean, you know, if every director who felt the need to, to make a movie about their ambivalence, about entering middle age or adulthood, made a movie about this culture's, for example, treatment of the elderly, uh, instead, or about the life of debt it forces its 20-somethings into, I think we would live in a better world. If anything, therefore, is capable of, of killing cinema, which seems like such a viable thing, right? There's all of this wild diversity in it. If anything is capable of killing cinema, it's fear. It's fear on the part of filmmakers. It's fear on the part of critics, people like myself. It's fear even on the part of audiences to try the ill-advised, to try the unsafe, to be reckless. I believe that cinema exists because our interests exceed our senses and our lifespans. We want to experience things. We want to see things that exist outside of our world. We have cinema because we want to see, we want to experience something that exists beyond ourselves. And in order for it to keep moving forward, it's necessary to keep looking, keep looking outside of where we already are. You know, look at how far cinema has come in 120 years, just about. It's actually less than 120 years, you know. And then realize, after you've looked at it, realize that it's only the first 120 years of cinema, hopefully. Hopefully in 500 years, we'll just think of it as the first century, as a primitive time, even despite everything that we've accomplished. You know, I, I hope that someday all of our mountains will look like hills. <laughs>